Let us confess our faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Let us all greet each other. You are the remained remnant of the age. Today's title is Children of Light. Starting last week, we've been looking at the book of 1 John. Last week, last Sunday, we discussed the gospel unity of life and fellowship. Emphasizing how the church is a unity of life made possible by the life of Jesus Christ and the unity of fellowship sharing and spreading His love. Through our union with Jesus Christ, we have become a spiritual family, and now the church exists so that unbelievers may also taste the life of Jesus Christ, and we must be the unity of life and fellowship. So we are a spiritual family within the union with Jesus Christ. We must allow the non-believers, the unbelievers, to also taste the life of Jesus Christ. And that's the reason of the existence of church. We must handle this commission. So it's not that we should just have the salvation to ourselves, but in this amazing grace and this amazing value, we must relay it so that we can spread this mystery. How can they be set free from their family problem? How can they be set free from their addiction problem? How can they be set free from the greed of the world? What's the mystery of being free from Genesis 3? That's the commission of church. When you read 1 John, you'll notice a strong emphasis on these three words, light, love, and life. Specifically, chapters 1 and 2 focus on our fellowship with God, who is light. In chapters 3 and 4, this love came from God, so it focuses on the fellowship with God. And the final chapter 5 speaks of the blessings obtained through fellowship with God, who is life. I've been using the term fellowship used in the text of 1 John to put this fellowship in an easier expression, in a more natural expression, it's, it means it's communion. It's communion. It's the relationship with between me and God. So the central theme of 1 John could be described as true fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. It's a true relationship, true fellowship between me and God. God created, why did God create humans in His image? Why did God create humans in His image? It was to have fellowship with them. He could not have fellowship with animals. He could not communicate with the animal. However, this fellowship was broken due to the disobedience of the first man, Adam, in the Genesis 3 incident. Humans, unable to solve this issue on their own, were destined for eternal punishment. 
However, amazingly, God, rich in love and mercy, opened the way of restoration. Let's restore ourselves. And the method to restoration was Jesus Christ. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Only through Jesus Christ alone we can enjoy spiritual fellowship with God and we can restore the relationship with God. This is why we emphasize only Jesus. Only Jesus, the complete Jesus, eternal Jesus. Even if the world or non-believers condemns Christianity as being self-righteous, they criticize us, but we have no choice but to proclaim. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind which, by which we must be saved. He has not given us another name. There are so many religions, so many names, there are so many heresies. With the name of Nimanhi, Ansanguk, or Buddha, even if you live eternal, even if you live with that name until you die, there is no salvation. Salvation is found in no one else, that's what he said, and that's written in the Word of God. And since this is what God's Word says, we must testify only Jesus is the Christ, the answer to all of life's problems. Jesus came to me and He finished all my past, present, future problems. And you must believe in this. And there are so many people, even if they heard this so many times that Jesus has solved all of their problems, there are people who still cannot believe this. They're held by, they're caught by their family problem, their children problem, a relationship with their mother-in-law. And just like how there's a sharp thing that's stuck in their, a sharp bone that's stuck in their throat, the problems are stuck in them. They're stuck by the problems. And they cannot success in worship. And that's the work of Satan. And that's how he is playing with you. Christianity does, does all the good works, charity, and service like other religions do. It may seem like other churches are more focusing on good works, charity, service, but then our church is also doing that as well. We invite and we participate in these social welfare and we invite the elderly and international and we also participate in international um, welfare as well. And we also go into the school fields overseas. However, before all these, the most important priority is meeting God. We must meet God. This is our highest priority. And Believers who have met God must live a life that realistically engages in fellowship with God. To have true fellowship, we must know who we are having fellowship with. 
The Apostle John guides believers who were spiritually stagnant at that time to a precise awareness of who God is, who they are as the saved, and their spiritual identity. That's what he emphasized. This is very important. Knowing who God is, the object of our faith, and, and who am I? Who am I that has been saved? And that's the core of walk of faith. We will be shaken and fall before problems and events without a proper understanding of these two points. There cannot be any spiritual growth. You cannot rise like the eagles soar. You will not grow, it will stop. Through today's passage, the Apostle John emphasized emphasizes God is light. Because God is light, what does that naturally make us? As the title of today's message suggests, we have become children of light. Because God is light, I am a child of light. I bless all members of Yewon Church. In the name of the Lord, to spiritually influence in the field that I live in, in the field that I work in. Because of me, my field will be gospelized. How can I make spiritual influence on my field? And I bless you to establish the absolute partisan of Christ in your fields. The first point, the experience of God who is light. Verse 5, this is a message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. God is light. First John has two declarative expressions about God's attributes. The first is God is light, which we just read, and the other is in First John 4, 8, God is love. God is light, God is love. Light and love are attributes of God. God is love and God is light. That is the attributes of God. First, the Apostle John mentions that because God is light, there is no darkness in Him at all, and in His light, all things are revealed. Therefore, he emphasizes that to have fellowship with the Holy God, we must be freed from the sin that represents darkness. How is this possible? It is through Jesus Christ. In John 1, 4-5, Jesus Christ is emphasized as both life and light. Jesus, is, Jesus Christ is the life and is the light. And Jesus is God, and there is only one God. That is why after Jesus came, we don't see Jehovah God mentioned anymore. Ever since Jesus came in the New Testament, they don't mention Jehovah God because Jesus himself is the Jehovah God. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Unfortunately, although Jesus, the light of life, came to earth, those trapped in the spirit of darkness did not recognize him. 
they did not realize him. Even if they were right before Jesus, they didn't know who Jesus was. They're coming to church, but they don't know what church is for. And as they're listening to the Word of God, they don't know, they cannot realize the Word of God. In our spiritual life, just as light is an attribute of God, darkness is an attribute of Satan. So it's a fight, battle of light and the darkness. Just like how God is real, Satan and devil are real as well. It's a fact. We must not forget that just as God is a real entity, the devil is also a real entity. Even though we're in the highly scientific 21st century, the spiritual reality has not changed. The more science advances, the more we make the mistake of not seeing the spiritual reality. The forces of darkness made up of Satan, the devil, and the evil spirits have a singular goal. It is to keep mankind separated from God in a state of unbelief, leading them on the path to eternal destruction. Because the devil, the Satan, cannot block, stop you from receiving salvation, but did they give up on you? No. They are trying their best so that you cannot receive grace, so that you cannot know God, and so that you cannot be part of this life movement. That is why the church cannot grow. The non-believers must come back to church, but then they are, but then the churches are actually kicking them out of church. The same destructive patterns are being used, putting mankind into spiritual, mental, and physical suffering, leading to eventual death and hell, with effects that extend to future generations. And it creates more and more non-believer family, and that's the destructive patterns that Satan uses. The only way to be freed from this is to accept Jesus Christ, the light of life. You must accept Him. You must change your Lord. Before I was my own Lord, I was my own master, but then now you're changing your master. When light comes, darkness cannot remain. When the light comes, darkness flees. So there is no place for darkness when the light comes. Think of the dawn breaking. When even a ray of light pierces the pitch darkness, the darkness quickly begins to disappear. When you walk, at, when you walk into your house at night, it's dark, but then once, the, once you turn on the light, all the darkness flees. So Jesus, the light of life, Jesus, the light of life, brightens our lives. And those who have the light of life are filled with joy and delight every moment. They're always joyful, they're always thankful, and they're always praising. Amen? Scandinavia, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark are some of the most well-developed welfare states in the Northern Europe. And they guarantee everything for their citizens. And they're very well-developed countries. However, the suicide rates are quite high there. One reason for this is the lack of sunlight. The reason for the high suicide rate is because the, of the lack of sunlight. These areas have long, gloomy winters and extremely short daylight hours. 
Frequent rain and cloudy skies. Simply put, there are not many days, not many sunny days. In such environments, depression and nerve-related issues are prevalent, are prevalent, leading to a high number of suicides. That's why, whenever the sun shines in those countries, people rush to parks and streets to sunbathe. The reason why the European travel around the world a lot is so that so that they can see the sunlight. It is the same spiritually. Without experiencing the warmth that God shines on us, we fall into spiritual stagnation. Just as the Europeans sunbathe whenever there is sun, we need to engage in spiritual sunbathing with all our might. The best way to experience God as light is through restoration of worship. It's the worship time. Life becomes revived when we are exposed to the light of the Word during this time. Holding on to the public message as a covenant and praying brings vital spiritual dy dynamics. When we experience the blessing of the Triune God being with us and the power that transcends time and space through the power of the throne, naturally, spiritual vitality is restored and joy overflows. Amen? And that's a normal Christian life. People who have received grace, they have different expressions. They have different facial expressions. So imagine how your expression will be if you listen to negative comments. But then you've listened to the Word of God and your facial expression changes. And you're at the same place and you're listening to the, you're listening to the same Word, but your face changes. So you've listened to the pulpit message the sermon for 30 minutes, then your face expression must change like an angel. So as you walk out the, as you walk out this place, the church, you must have angelic faces. The outward expression of this joy is evangelism. So why are you so happy? Why are you so overjoyed? When the non-believers is asking you those questions, that is called evangelism. And missions to reach to 37 nations and 5,000 tribes. So those people have received God's grace. Our church is currently engaging in the One More Evangelism Movement. There are so many who have not heard the accurate gospel. And they came to church in this one-time opportunity. But then they left church, so we're inviting them back again to listen to the Word of God one, just one more time. Then you'll be saved, you'll be freed. You'll be like me and you'll be able to realize the fundamental love and everything will be healed. That is the One More Movement. So what should the church do? So you know how precious, how important the churches are. This church is not like other church. It's not anywhere else. Then you must, then you must listen to this gospel just one more time. Just give them one more opportunity.
There are some people who don't even care about this, but then God's interest is in this one more time. And this week, evangelism camps in Taiwan and Mexico are taking place. And God's Spirit is using our church like that. That's what God's doing. With This should be the time schedule for you to be experience the abundant joy in Christ. Through you filled with the light of life, there will be evidence of the one who holds the power of the air being destroyed. You experience God's power breaking down all of Satan's strongholds. I bless all members of Yeon Church in the name of the Lord to experience this living work of God, expanding the place of your field tents. Point two, a life that walks in the light. In verse six, if we say we have fellowship with Him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. After revealing that God is light, the Apostle John encourages us to walk in the light. Today's passage shows that the primary prerequisite for walking in the light is to be cleansed from the problem of sin. God detests sin while humans, on the contrary, have a strong inclination towards it. In 1 John, the word sin rep repeatedly appears. This emphasizes the need to resolve the problem of sin, to have true fellowship with God, and to walk in the light. Without resolving the issue of sin, we cannot experience joy. Many believers especially struggle with guilt even though they profess faith in Jesus. In other words, they live a life where the assurance of salvation is either faint or entirely absent. When this is the case, a common characteristic is no desire to proclaim Christ. There is no courage to evangelize because they are caught up in their own problems, so they draw the line. How could someone like me evangelize? They say drawing a line there. It is falling entirely for Satan's cunning deception. And to be set free from our sins, they are emphasizing the blood of Jesus Christ. The solution to all our sins lies in the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. Not just some sins, but all sins. His Son purifies us from all sin. All of mankind's sins manifest in two primary ways, is original sin and personal sin. Original sin is a fundamental sin we weren't even aware of. Once you were born, once you were born, you were born with the sin. No one has taught you. No one has taught you, but you cry when you are born, and you feel jealous. So, due to Adam's transgression, all of humanity, as his descendants, became a mass of sin. They are born as a mass of sin. So, there is no child, no baby that's born smiling. They all, they all, they're all born crying. So other religions, they do not know original sin. Jewish people, they do not know original sin. For 2,000 years, they are under the suffering because they do not know original sin. Only by getting out of it can there be a fundamental solution to sin. The Bible, specific, especially Hebrews 9, emphasizes that the way out is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9.12 says, He entered the Holy of Holies 
for once for all having made eternal atonement with his blood. Verse 22 says, without shedding of blood there is no remission of sins. They're talking about the blood of Jesus Christ. Through the atonement and resurrection of Jesus Christ on the cross, the forgiveness of sins has been fully confirmed. However, many believers are seized by the matter of one's own sin. Because we still live in the environment of Genesis 3, we sometimes do things that are not pleasing to God. That is why for all men has sinned, have sinned. It's talking about their own sin. The immediate result is that our fellowship with God is immediately disturbed. So there are disturbance for your attendance at church or church events or your church position. And in severe cases, our assurance of salvation is shaken. There is an easy way out of this situation. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? If there is anything in you that is frustrating, that is frustrating you or anything that is troubling you, you can tell God, you can confess before God everything as it is. Confess your sins and it's over. So someone, those who are saved from the Genesis 3 problem, you just need to confess your sins and it's over. There is no sin that cannot be washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. Even murderer, even the criminals, when they confess their sin, and when they accept Jesus Christ, then they will be saved. Jesus will make you, will cleanse you from your sin. In the case of Catholicism, we talk about confession as if the priest has the power to forgive sins. So they go to the priest and they confess all of their sins. And the priest says, I forgive your sin. But but there is no such thing in the Bible. Where does it say in the Bible that if you confess your sin to the Catholic priest, then they'll forgive your sin? So when they confess their sin before the priest, they think that everything is safe, everything is okay. But there is no such thing in the Bible. There is no other name. And there is only the blood of Jesus Christ that can save you. What kind of sin problem can be solved between sinful humans? So they're all sinful humans. How can they judge each other? How can you judge others? So you have sinned even more. And you're hiding. So those who judge and those who gossip, those who gossip about others, and those who criticize others, those people actually have more to be judged and to be criticized for. So do not play a key role in serving Satan. Do not talk about others. All, all mankind are sinners. And they're all set free by Christ. And they're all people of God. So who am I to judge others? The problem of sin can never be solved by the power of sinful mankind. That is why God himself came to earth in flesh and blood. 
Without this spiritual perspective, humans can only continue to struggle with the problem of sin on their own. Because they have so many sins, they cannot even listen to the Word of God. And Satan is constantly deceiving us. The Apostle Paul declares in Romans 8, 1-2, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ, in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Even the sin that you commit in the world, once you serve your times, it's all forgiven. Jesus finished everything on the cross. He has set you free. Have you ever seen the face of the sinners? I've seen, I've seen the face of people who committed crimes or sins, but their when you look at their face, it looks like they're living in hell. Jesus finished everything on the cross. He finished everything on the cross, Tetelestai. I bless all of you in the name of the Lord to enjoy the blessing of complete liberation from the bondage of all sin based on the Word of God and become absolute disciples of Christ walking in the light and spreading the good influence of the Gospel. Its conclusion. Professor Lee Kuk Jong is a renowned authority in the field of emergency medicine in Korea. He is one of Korea's leading authorities on external injury, post traumatic sequel, and gunshot, gunshot wounds. He saved the life of Captain Seok Hae-gyun, who was shot during the Gulf of Aden operation, and a North Korean soldier who was returning home through the armistice line was shot in five places and was almost unable to survive, but he was saved through two surgeries by this professor. The Korean medical system, which was a barren area for emergency trauma, was systemized through him. He is currently the director of Armed Forces War Hospital, and there is a book called Golden Hour written by Professor Lee. The Golden Hour, as you may know, means that patients with severe external injury must be treated within one hour of the accident. In this book, he puts it this way. Saving lives, that's our job. Any life that can be saved should be saved unconditionally. These two expressions should be the spiritual motto of our lives. When we restore the field with this spiritual attitude, we can keep the spiritual golden hour. There are so many people who are dying and suffering around you. You are children of light. You are children of light. You must have this spiritual identity. I was born Christian and I didn't know this and it did not matter. So when did God start using me? When I realized that I was a child of God and that, Jesus, that God is living. And I realized that when I put all in to my church position and when I was proclaiming and testifying the word of God out in the field. And that's when I realized that I'm a child of God, that I'm a child of light, that I'm different from the non-believers and that God has chosen me. And that's what I realized. And this one more evangelism movement 
And everyone that I meet, I will save, I will absolutely save. May you have this resolution and may you I bless all members of Yemen Church in the name of the Lord to have the spiritual identity of children of light and have the evidence to save every life that can be saved through the ongoing One More Evangelism movement. Let us pray. Dear God, just like the word given to us, may we become a child of God, people of God who can set all the people who are suffering set all of them free with the blood of Jesus Christ and may we and I who know the mystery of being set free mystery, mystery of being completely free from all sins may we testify and proclaim this evidence and of Jesus Christ Amen